I was watching some videos over the weekend that were uh -huh. preposterous. Yeah. There are so many conspiracy theories and whatnot around that you can't even keep track of them. This one blew my mind. The Earth is flat. Have you heard the flat earther people that believe the Earth is flat? This is a deep failure of our educational system. Thank you. <laughs> it's, I've stopped chasing after people with those belief systems because that, I don't see the point. That there's something deeper going on in our society that somehow enables people to believe they're making cogent arguments yeah. that they're not. <laughs> Rocky, I've just discovered the best thing ever. Better than this? Way better than that. This actually does something. Trust me, Rocky, you have never experienced anything like this in your whole life. What is it? It changes your whole perspective on shit. The only thing that's been to space is your imagination. want to know why it was that the every government in the world threw off these satellites that were completely unnecessary according to the flat earth model well you know and, and how why could we see them there there are some theories like the the ISS that they'll tell you comes over they say that satellites could either just be like um, already there already unexplainable things that they just say oh those are satellites you know, because when you look at the, the ISS, it doesn't exactly look like a space station. It looks like a self-illuminating light. A what? It looks like basically another star. It looks like a light. Like when they say that's a satellite passing over, it just looks like a light in the sky. But if you look at many different supposed satellites going throughout the sky, they'll do very strange things. They'll have very strange movements, things that satellites I've don't do. I've never seen that. I've seen the satellites just slowly cruising above. I've never seen satellites doing anything strange. Again, that's just my particular observation. We have, we have but are you saying the satellites either aren't there or they're there, but they're not satellites? Or what? On, on our model, satellites don't exist because they're impossible. Did you know that satellites were actually invented by Arthur C. Clarke, the science fiction author? Uh, I didn't <laughs> they, know that. <laughs> they, they shortly became science fact uh, after that. They, yeah, the geostationary satellite, look it up, it was created by a science fiction author. And then within a decade, NASA claims to have sent a real one up there. And ever since then, that's where we get all our communications from.
so if satellites were real, we would constantly hear stories of them being hit by meteors or comets, and that doesn't happen. Uh, no one's ever lost their direct TV feed during the Perseids meteor shower because one of the meteors knocked out one of the satellites. Regarding the flat earth, is the permanent or the dull, and how do so called meteorites and asteroids penetrate or get through the permanent or the dull? Stated before in previous videos, those that are new to my channel don't understand the concept. Basically, there is nothing beyond the permanent besides the waters above in heaven. So, when it comes to so called meteorites and asteroids, all they are are falling stars that are within the firmament. There's nothing beyond the firmament that can penetrate and fall to the ground or fall to earth. I'm just taking a look at the definition of a shooting star. It's supposedly a meteorite burning up as it enters Earth's atmosphere. But why call it a shooting star? This is the Freemasons behind the scenes I love to mock. That's exactly what it is. That's why they call it a shooting star. But of course, they give you a false definition. We're safe here. We don't need to worry about that. We don't need to worry because God would keep... Oh, the dome would keep us safe from asteroids? I guess it didn't in Arizona. Or is that crater also fake, made by medieval bulldozers or something? There's theories on meteors that I, I don't really have too much of an opinion. But there are many people who think that it could be pieces of the dome. So what do we see around the world? These lights that we saw in Russia a few years back and Arizona a few weeks ago, what are these? Well, we've got shooting stars. Like I said, stars aren't actual terra firma. So when you see a light shoot from somewhere to somewhere else, it's simply that. It's simply a light shooting. It's, it's not a rock in outer space coming somewhere. No, no, but the ones in Russia that actually broke school windows and, and it, it, it almost felt like, a, like an explosion. Right. And then you've got these ones where you can see from mostly from Russia, it seems like from dashboard cams, you'll see right, these bur burning balls of something coming. And yeah, the, they've, they've even uh, cr crashed windows and something. These, I think, are some sort of military thing that they're shooting to make us believe that meteorites exist. Well, I'm not retarded. Very well. I don't normally do this, but would you like to take another retarded test? Yes, but should you really be calling it that? Give me your hands. What? Did you know I can tell the future? No. Oh, yes. You can tell a lot about a person from their palm. For example, right here, I see your beautiful house in the future. Here's your wife tending the garden, tire swing out back. And right in the middle of your backyard <laughs> is the swimming pool. I'm sorry, you're retarded. <laughs> what they should probably do is have an event in the Special Olympics where only flat earthers compete against one another. So that way the people that are like really mentally disabled can sit back and look at people that are even worse off than them and, you know, watch them compete against one another. I have shown John that this is test subject A, okay, and this is for y'all as well. What we have here is we have an expanse to separate waters below from waters above, and just so that my test subject uh, doesn't mess up here, that'll bend that down just a little bit so it won't hang. I don't want it to start weeping water up to itself. That down. Okay, so here we go, test subject A, and I'm going to start filling the water the rest of the way. Um, and in a second, I'm going to show you that once I push that down, there's a vacuum there. And I know you, many people may say this is so stupid as an example. But just track with me a minute, you'll see where I'm going with this. All right, so with all that in mind, we're going to do a play-by-play -play right here. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to cut this water off in just a second. But to recap, in the very beginning based on what we look at scripture and just using some simple principles to apply this um, it, it would appear that there's just nothing but water and then this dome capsule was created to go down and 
separate in between the waters. Now, somebody might already start laughing at this moment, but keep in mind that it's been shown scientifically. I'll show video, a link in the video description below where that actually they took a submarine. They tried to go down. They found deeper water lower than where they went, and they tried to go down below that, and they actually bounced off. So not only is their, their water separated from the waters, but like the, the dome itself. Okay, so here we go. So while we have this dome under the water, something I want to keep in mind while I'm holding this in place is that in Noah's day, when the heavens above were open, the windows of heaven above were open, the literal uh, Shemayim, where the expanse is here, to let the water in. The fountains of the deep, it says, were broke up as well. Now, if you notice, um, right now this is under a vacuum, so if I actually poked a hole in the top of this, not only will water pour in from the top, but it also make a way where the water could come in from the bottom at that point. So that makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, flooding a dome as well um, in the Noah account. But anyway, so what we have under here is we have this little ecosystem at this point. And, you know, it would also account for the sky being blue as well. But um, anyway, long story short, you've got this factory and you've got an earth under here. And you've got the sun, moon, and stars underneath here. And this is based on scripture what the world is described as um a dome under the water uh with the waters under the dome separated out and so to prove to my son and the rest of the world that you know we do live in a very special uh place john is that wet i mean sorry i got a little bit of water dripped on it but, but it ain't wet at all is it and there you go. I mean, it's not rocket science. It's not quantum physics. Well, I, I take that back. I, there's a lot of the stuff in the scripture that's actually kind of quantum physics. But that, I mean, that really is nutshell is it, guys. And I was just thinking about this today when reading scripture with Little Man. We were actually discussing some things. This, this is a very simple design that the Most High Yah created, and it makes a perfect world. And you need to accept that you live under a firmament and um, and not on some crazy spinning ball flying through space at you know it, i mean the stars if if that was the case then all the stars that surround us would have been changed around uh time and time again and they all stay the same in the sky every night i mean there's just there's so much evidence here that you can take simple experiment like right here in the kitchen sink when you're doing dishes and see for yourself and show others and i mean Scripture don't lie. I'm taking a page out of Anthony's book here with this flat earth, ball earth experiment. Let's take a look here with this plate simulating the flat earth. You have these two objects in the plate. One will represent North America and South America. Now let's see what happens when you install the oceans on this flat earth model. Just like the flat earth, the ice rings hold the water in. You see the land above, of course, and the water's flat. Let's try the, the ball earth experiment here. Let's see how well it works. There's your globe, there's your ball. Let's pour water on it. Let's see what happens. There's your ball earth. Water does not stick to it. The spinning ball, all Earth loses nothing but garbage. But, I'm not embarrassed for me, I'm embarrassed for you, because I need to go to this length and show you how ridiculous the idea that you live on a spinning ball actually is. Me standing in the pissing rain, getting soaking wet, you need the boy. Hope you appreciate this. Hey, found this shape. I've seen it in other videos of the ball earth with the oceans removed okay let's try this I don't know what's happening but it doesn't appear to be filling up to the shape of the ball it seems to be running off the bottom here I'll try this Again, it's running off the sides. I can't get it to mouth up to the shape of the board. I, I don't know why. 
Should I spin it? Should I spin it? Aye. Give it a spin. How about you? Right, let's see. No. Until, well, for some of you, up until this moment, um, we believed that the ship would go over the curvature of the Earth and disappear. And this is why the bottom of the boat would disappear first, and the sails were the last things to disappear to sink beneath the horizon line. But now we know, and especially through the use of these super zoom lenses on new cameras, the Nikon P900, P900X, you look at the horizon, you see the ship disappear over the curvature of the air, and then you take your camera and you zoom in and all of a sudden the boat is still there. The boat has not disappeared over the curvature of the earth. It's clearly visible in your camera. It's happily floating on the ocean that are trying to prove the flat earth by saying, since we see that the horizon is a straight line, then the Earth must therefore necessarily be flat. That is not quite correct because of how our vision works. So uh, the lens of our eye and we have its pupil in the middle is this big hole and the optic nerve enters the back of your eyeball and this big gap in the middle of your vision that your brain has to fill in the information for. It. Um, the horizon is a good proof. It's always at eye level. Whether you're at sea level, on top of a mountain, it's at eye level. You go up in an airplane, it's at eye level. Uh, I've seen footage of weather balloons at 22 miles up, 120,000 feet. Right? It's flat. Going back to the curvature, the measurable curvature, if you go 22 miles up, straight up, and the horizon is at eye level, that only happens on an extended flat plane. If the Earth is a ball, then you have to account for curvature. As you go up, the horizon is going to be down. You're going to have to start looking down to see the horizon. If the Earth is a ball. It's not a ball. <laughs> 刚开始的时候,我也不相信。但是我想了又想,思考了又思考。好像可能性还蛮高的。其实我们所谓的地球呢,我们住的地球。可能不是一个球 包括地球的年龄Northern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere. These are the so-called Northern Hemisphere and so-called Southern Hemisphere. See it flipped over. Okay, now why is this on the flat Earth model? Let's, let's first of all let's take a look. For example.
example, at a ceiling light in a living room. Now just imagine this is a southern hemisphere and the so-called northern hemisphere on the other side. This is how you're going to get it. It's going to be flipped around. Just like you see here with this crude image, <laughs> the smiley face I made. You're standing here on the northern side, for example. You're going to see an upside down smile. You're standing here. You're going to see it right side. It's exactly what you're seeing here. Almost like stars being seen through the moon. And also just take a look at the edges. They're not uniformed. I believe the moon is more like when you look at a ceiling light, semi-rounded in the front again, but flat in the back. On a video, someone was explaining um, why the moon looks uh, right side up in the northern hemisphere and upside down in the southern hemisphere and how does that work on flat earth. He said, he explained it like this. This is the coin and I have taped it to the ceiling. This is Benjamin Franklin. And right now he appears to be right side up in the sky. He is the moon. But what I'm going to do is take a couple of steps towards the other side of the room. I'm going to turn and look up at Mr. Franklin and see what happens. Two steps, turn, looking up, facing the other wall. There he is, look, he's upside down. Did I cross the equator into the southern hemisphere to look at the ceiling? No. My home is in the Midwestern United States. I did not cross the equator. This room is not built on a ball. I am currently not upside down looking at this coin taped to the ceiling. I'm going to do that one more time. I'm going to cross into the, no, not the northern hemisphere. I'm just taking a couple steps, turning and looking up. It's all about perspective. That's why if you're looking at the Pleiades constellation, you can actually see it more clearly if you look a little bit to the side of it. If you look directly on, it's a bit harder to see and our eyes are actually shifting when we see the saccades anyway. So when you think you're looking directly at something, your eyes are actually making little micro movements. Um, and so your pupil is never really going to be in the same place or pointing at the same thing all the time. Okay, I'm going to explain to you the mystery behind dark matter. Obviously, if you understand anything about uh, what scientists have been telling you about dark matter and spiral galaxies and why they can't understand why the so-called rotation of the spiral galaxies is constant, even from the outer edges of the spiral galaxies. Well, that's because <laughs> they don't understand that we're living inside the concave Earth and there's a celestial glass firmament, not only at 100 kilometers, but the upper glass firmament, which was mentioned in Genesis chapter 1, verses 6 through 8, which is made out of glass too, and on the inside surface of that is the celestial ocean, and that ocean is dark, so I'm going to add some dark paint to simulate the celestial ocean. If you read Psalm 18, verse 11, it says, God is covered by the dark waters and the thick clouds. It also says of the skies, but the skies is actually actually had been added to the translation. So I'm going to make this water dark to simulate the celestial ocean. Now the stars are created by multi-bubble sonoluminescence. You can create sonoluminescent stars in a laboratory in water by reverberating sound. So there's a bunch of son sonoluminescent stars up above. They're very small and they're not millions and millions of light years apart, apart in a way. Okay. Now the dark matter enigma is simply dark waters. Read Psalm 18, verse 11, dark waters, okay? So if you understand that the spiral galaxies are actually encased in water, it's a homogenous, it's an isotropic medium in which it's, it's, it causes everything within that spiral cluster to have the same rotational speed, if there's any speed 
currently, because I believe what happened during the flood is that the windows of heaven were open. The sink simulates the glass firmament above that's holding the celestial ocean. Not the firmament at 100 kilometers, but the higher one, the initial one, okay? And so there was sand in this initial firmament, firmament before the flood. And then when it says the windows of heaven were opened, the sonoluminescent stars, there were many that clustered together and they're creating very, there's a lot of heat, okay? It's creating nuclear fusion or whatever. And it's burning, it burned a hole through the glass sky. That's why we said, that's why it says the windows of heaven were opened. So the, hot, the water got hot, the sun and stars got hot, and they burned a hole. I'm going to pour this heavy whipping cream to simulate the nebula. Nebula means cloud, remember? It's just a cloud, it's a cluster of clouds, okay? So now, when the windows of heaven were opened, obviously, you know, I'm going to strain this. That's why we have spiral galaxies in the first place, because they are <laughs> It's still spinning. There it is. There's your dark matter. Dark matter is dark waters. Mystery solved. All because I understand that the concave earth, the glass sky, the celestial sphere up in the middle of the earth and stars are tiny. Clouds mean ne nebula means clouds. Okay, everything is tiny and small. Dark matter is mystery solved once again. You understand? So the windows of heaven were actually closed because the heat subsided and the glass firmament sealed back up. So the, re the remnant, the spiral remnant, is left behind. That's all it is, guys. Oh, my God. Now, you understand that if you're wrong about this, then you're crazy.